Okay. Welcome, everybody. We'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call. Chair Duran? Here. Vice Chair Sanchez Palacios? Here. Committee Member McReynolds is absent. That would take us to public comments. Do we have any public comments this afternoon? We have one public communication, uh, Mr. John Hamill. Yes. If you'd like to come up and speak into the mic, sir. Sure. All right, just right over here, it'll pick you up. Right Let's do it over here. Good afternoon. My name is John Hamill. I'm here with my friend Brad Zlomke. We're representing approximately 500 local golfers here in the city of Ventura. I don't know if you're aware of it, but we have Buena Ventura Golf Course and Olivas Park Golf Course. We have over 500 members in that, between those two golf courses. Those two golf courses service about 120,000 rounds a year, generating an income of about $3.2 million. Olivas Park, Olivas Links Golf Course was rebuilt in 2007 and is managed by Kemper Golf, Kemper Sports. After that renovation was completed, there was no clubhouse anymore. There was no restaurant anymore. It's a championship golf course that is bringing lots of revenue up here from all the other count surrounding counties. My question to this committee today is, since this is an economic development subcommittee, why hasn't Olivas Links Golf Course received funds to develop a clubhouse proper amenities there, considering the income that it's bringing into the city. Where is that revenue going? It's certainly not being put back into the golf course, which, as I said, is generating enormous income. So I'm here representing the 500 members of Olivas Seniors Men's Club and Olivas Men's Club, and the thousands of outsiders who come to our city and spend thousands of dollars here. And yet when they leave Olivas Links Golf Course, they say, where's the restaurant? Where's a proper bathroom? We have trailers there for 16 years. It's time, people. We need to send money back into that golf course. Thanks for your time. Our public speakers. Thank you. Thank you for your communications today. Um, we'll go into formal items, and uh, I'd like to get a motion to approve the committee minutes for March 21st. So moved. And I'll second. Chair Duran? Yes. Vice Chair Sanchez Palacios? Yes. And committee member McReynolds is absent. Motion carries. So now we are going into the uh, economic development strategy update. I'd like to introduce Bill Fulton and Derek Braun. Come on up. The city hired PFM Group Consulting to help us with creating our five-year economic development strategy. And so they are here today to present what they have found through the economic context as well as kick us off through this process. This here. All right, ready to go. We're ready to go. 
Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Bill Fulton. I know many of you. I'm a senior advisor to PFM Consulting, along with Strategic Economics, which is the firm that Derek is with. We were selected by the city to do the five-year economic development strategy. Um, I'm going to walk us through. We're really at the beginning of the process. I'm going to walk us through the walk through the schedule and the process, and then Derek is going to present the initial findings of the economic context study. There are no recommendations about what to do that are on the table yet, but let me begin. Um, let me begin by going through the the, pro the project itself. We'll begin with introductions. That's us. Uh, we'll talk about the project overview. Derek will go through the economic context study. We'll talk about the. Um, the Economic Development Survey, which is going live today, and then we'll talk about next steps. So, an overview of the project. First of all, you all know Meredith and Carrie. They are the they are they are the economic development team for the city. Uh, they are the they are housed in the city manager's office, and they are handling this from the city side. PFM Group, I'm a, that's a national consulting firm. I'm a, I'm a senior advisor to them. We're working with a couple other people at PFM and Derek uh, with Strategic Economics from the Bay Area, which has done economic development strategies all over California. Uh, it, we, we are working jointly on this project. Um, the last economic development strategy was done 10 years ago, and it covered the years 2013 to 2018. So. Uh, probably a new, so many things have changed since then, both before and after the pandemic, that a new strategy is needed. So the effort will result in the development of what uh, we're calling a vibrant Ventura vision, which will be an economic, an action plan for the city's economic growth between 2023 and 2028. And it's a difficult balance, as many of you know, because on the one hand, we have a robust business community. Uh, and a particular vibe that is attractive to certain business sectors. Uh, many businesses in Ventura are extremely successful, uh, but we have to encourage necessary economic growth while at the same time protecting Ventura's unique character. So, and I just also want to say that um, we're aware of the fact that the general plan update is going on at the same time. Uh, the city adopted the housing element. Uh, there'll be a meeting here later today tonight to talk about some of the land use scenarios for some of the neighborhoods. We will align with the general plan update in the housing element. Uh, <coughs> growth, land use, and housing is not the primary focus of the economic development strategy. Uh, if you've been following the general plan update, you do know that there are some high level uh, vision, vision points, vision uh, ideas about economic development in that, and we've been coordinating with the, uh, with the general plan update team. So uh, what we're going to do in the course of this process is we'll try to uh, identify the economic goals, build community consensus, create information baselines, and, and in particular identify indicators and metrics that we can follow over time so that over the five-year period of this plan, uh, the city and everyone in the community can follow the progress toward the goals. Um, we've already been doing stakeholder interviews, by which I simply mean to say talking to people in the business, business and economic community. Um, we are today launching an online community survey. Um, we're going to have a, 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 some public workshops. In particular, we're going to have one at the end of May. I'll talk about that. And uh, <laughs> Derek has been doing a deep dive into the economic data about the city of Ventura, which we're going to get to in just a minute, right? Um, just to give you an idea of the timing, this time, this is a, unlike the general plan, which is a long-term plan, this is a short-term short action strategy, five years. The time frame to develop and create implementation steps for this plan is uh, short as well. Um, we are doing the economic context now. Uh, we, we've been doing that in the winter and into the spring. Now we're beginning to have community meetings and the survey, um, we will work on the strategy this summer. Uh, we will, we, another thing we're going to do is what's called resources assessment. We're going to assess 
what budget and staffing resources the city needs to implement this economic development strategy. And then at some point, probably in the late summer, uh, we'll develop an implementation phase. Here are all the st action steps that need to be taken. And then we will, we will work with Meredith and Kerry to take the, and the city manager's office to take this strategy to the city council for approval. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Derek Braun from Strategic Economics, who's going to been working, uh, uh, done a deep data dive, and is working on a lot of uh, uh, sort of an assessment of what the um, of what the city's economy looks like right now. So, Derek. Thank you, Bill, um, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present some of our initial work. I appreciate it. Uh, so the economic context study that Bill mentioned, this really, uh, it's starting from a 2019 study that was done for the city called the uh, Ventura Economic Base Analysis. So we're really, you know, working off of that starting point, but also looking, taking a hard look at what's happened since 2019, since obviously a lot of things have shifted with the COVID pandemic uh, and recovery since. Um, the goal of the economic context study is to inform the development of the strategy, to look for opportunities and challenges in the city. And uh, right now our analyses are underway. Uh, we do still have a few missing pieces that we're, we're um, finishing up right now, but we anticipate having our report done pretty soon. Um, and so today I'm presenting some preliminary findings and background information, and there's a whole lot more to come. Um, the content of the economic context study, we're, we're looking at industry sector and cluster analyses, so basically uh, the composition of the economy by jobs and industries, uh, real estate market conditions, we're generating top five lists of businesses as we're calling them, some of the major businesses found within key industry sectors in Ventura. Um, compiling those findings from the stakeholder interviews in order to create a compilation of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats confronting the city. And then also we'll be pulling together a series of key indicators to gauge the current situation within the economy and then uh, future progress during the course of the plan. So I mentioned those overall employment trends and specific industry clusters that we're looking at. Uh, as I said, we're starting from the basic framework that was established in this 2019 study done for the city. And so on the right there, you can see how we're looking at this. There's, um, we have what we call the export-based industry clusters that bring in a lot of jobs and revenue to the city. Within that, we have the driving clusters that are really driving a lot of economic growth. The emerging clusters that are smaller, but they have a lot more opportunity to continue ramping up at a very fast pace. And then what we're calling the legacy clusters, um, a lot of these titles came from the prior study, but the legacy clusters, which include things such as the oil and gas industry, some of the industries that have underpinned the Ventura economy for a long time. Other major, major drivers include tourism and hospitality, as well as lifestyle, re retail, and personal services that really serve residents and visitors to the community. Um, and I'm on. So I meant, on the last slide, there was a note that we are waiting on a little bit more employment data for what's happened uh, since the COVID pandemic. This is the 2019 year. We'll have that soon. But for the time being, what I can say is uh, this, this chart here shows total monthly employment in Ventura County. You see the kind of up and down cycle. It's all cyclical in terms of uh, employment growth throughout the, the course of each year. But you can see the big drop off in uh, March of 2020, but basically the message here is, at least countywide, employment has uh, recovered to pre-pandemic levels. And so, you know, we, we'll be comparing this to the performance of the city and the drivers in the city, but uh, employment growth has actually come back pretty strongly. Now, within that, the framework I mentioned of the driving industry clusters, and the emerging clusters. I just want to give you a sense of what's, what we're looking at within each of those. Uh, so again, driving industry clusters are the ones that are really anticipated to drive a lot of growth in the, in the city. They are um, sort of latching onto and growing in conjunction with broader trends across the county, across the region. Within this, you find uh, health services, and I just put some examples of major employers in each of these. So the Community Memorial Health System, Victoria Ventura Healthcare, um, there's business services where you find things like the trade desk, medical management, and I will say the way these industry clusters work, the way we look at them, an employer can be in multiple clusters, and that's the whole idea of these industry clusters. They're an ecosystem of businesses that are sort of mutually supportive. Um, so then you have strength in information technology and analytics, medical devices, uh, including R&D and manufacturing, 
and then food processing as well. And then we have the list of the emerging industry clusters that are smaller today, but poised for a lot of growth. They have a lot of um, uh, tailwinds behind them. So in this, you find advertising and marketing technology with businesses such as Trade Desk and the Giddy Up Group. Uh, then there's also additive manufacturing and Industry 4.0, which is essentially just the modern sort of value add form of manufacturing that relies on more rapid prototyping and research and development being integrated more tightly with manufacturing. It's, it's essentially, in many ways, advanced manufacturing. Um, and you find businesses such as Exponential Works, Dalkey Microwave, uh, found in this. And then there's offshore aquaculture, which is a very small industry cluster. We don't see it in the data so much right now, but there has been a lot of planning to try to build up this industry cluster in the future. Uh, some other points in some of those, those major sectors that I mentioned. Uh, the tourism industry in Ventura is recovering, uh, but there are some long-standing challenges that I think a lot of people in the room are, are familiar with. Um, but what you can see here is the city's transient occupancy tax receipts. This is not inflation, for in inflation adjusted, but regardless, you can see there has been a big recovery uh, in the TOT revenue generated by hotels and short-term visitor uh, lodging. Uh, since 2020, so even on an inflation-adjusted basis, this has actually recovered quite well. Uh, the majority of the transient occupancy tax revenue in the city is driven by five large hotels. Um, other indicators of strength are the hotel occupancy rates are now at 70.9% versus 71.6% heading into the pandemic. Uh, but we also know that there is a long-standing challenge in attracting overnight visitors to Ventura. It's historically been a little bit more of a, a day tripper place. A lot of visitors come as day trippers. And so, you know, it's worth thinking about what is the thing that might sort of strengthen these hotels, strengthen overnight stays to ensure that they can continue to perform well. There are also some smaller hotel properties in the city that do require some reinvestment or, or repositioning. Lifestyle, retail, personal services, you know, a lot of household serving and visitor serving businesses uh, are recovering quite well. Our, the data in here only goes through 2021, but what it shows is that uh, in the city of Ventura, the sales recovery was driven by dining and drinking. All those restaurants, all those businesses that have really flourished with downtown Ventura having been repositioned so well, as well as catching on to longer term trends that are favoring experiential retail that can't be replicated online. And so these dining, drinking, entertainment businesses are part of what can succeed even as online sales take up more and more of total sales over time. Uh, the city also had a strong recovery in motor vehicle sales. And overall, the city has the second highest sales per capita in Ventura County. Now, we do have much more detailed sales tax data. We're going to do some sub-area analyses, but uh, that data is just coming through now, so we don't quite have that yet. Thinking about retail shopping centers in Ventura, you know, there's a lot of strengths here for the future of retail. Uh, it's a high income population, the city and county. There's a diverse mix of retail and a lot of different formats. You can think about the existence of Pacific View Mall, of big box stores, all of your neighborhood shopping centers, and the walkable downtown in Ventura. Uh, and you do have that strong base I mentioned of the experiential retail that is a little bit more resilient in the face of online sales growth. Um, the city has great access and visibility from Highway 101, as well as the additional visitor-driven sales. But there are these challenges that we know are also on the horizon. So there is increasing competition for those regional retail sales, especially in Oxnard, the collection at River Park. Uh, there is the growth in e-commerce sales I've been mentioning, as well as the need to th think about sort of what's the evolution and long-term positioning of Pacific View Mall as, uh, as the retail industry continues to evolve. Turning to the workforce and resident skills and alignment with jobs, uh, you know, Ventura does have a very well-educated population, a lot of different training institutions. Uh, you can think about Ventura College, you can think about the CSU. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities for, for education and job training in the city, as well as I know housing costs are a big concern for everyone, but at the same time lower housing costs than some surrounding communities. But challenges exist. Uh, Ventura is positioned at sort of the edge of the enormous, enormous Los Angeles region and the large base of jobs that exists across the entire region. And so what that means is that, you know, if you have, let's say, a dual income household, dual worker household, 
uh, the pool of jobs that are compatible with them might be a little more limited within close proximity. Somebody might have to go further away. And so this, the position on the edge of the region does create a little bit of a, work, of a job access and workforce challenge. Um, there's a question about with, with all those high school residents, how compatible are they with the local base of jobs? And we're looking at that a little more closely. There are the challenges around housing affordability, especially for lower income workers. And um, you know, we're also going to take a close look at ensuring what, what training resources need to be targeted to the city's major growth industries. I'm going to get a little bit into some of the, the real estate side of things here for a moment. Uh, the city, as you can see, this breaks down the inventory of, of real estate space based on data from CoStar, which tracks this data. And on the left here, this is a breakdown of the share of industrial retail and office inventory as a percent of total space in the city. And it shows that almost half of all the city's space is considered to be industrial, uh, industrial space. And now that within that, there's a lot of flexibility. It's actually very valuable because of that. Um, but it is a huge part of the city's overall real estate inventory. And then you have retail at 32%, office at 20%. On the right, that bar chart shows each city's share of the countywide inventory uh, by building type, office, retail, and industrial. And in most categories, Ventura is second behind Oxnard or uh, actually first in terms of the total uh, inventory of office space within the county. So let's talk about that office space. What we are hearing from our interviews and from what we are seeing in the data Office space is performing very well in Ventura. You can see on the right, the vacancy rate is 5.8% in the city, 11.8% in the county. Uh, rents do, however, lag the county a little bit. And so there's some interesting dynamics here. There's strong demand for office space, but in Ventura especially, it tends to be driven by a lot of smaller professional and medical services businesses. Uh, and there are some older properties which partly account for the lower rents that are being achieved in that space. So, you know, it's worth thinking about which of those properties might need some uh, reinvestment or redevelopment. The industrial and flex space I mentioned that makes up almost half the city's inventory, that is extremely constrained supply with very low vacancy rates at this point. This has been a big growth area during the pandemic across the country, um, but especially in Ventura. You can see again the vacancy rate in the city for industrial space is currently measured as being at 1.4 percent, which is incredibly, incredibly low. Uh, and across the county, 2.6 percent, still low. Rents have been increasing very steadily, but especially since 2020 for this space. Uh, you know, this is really valuable space. It meets the needs for manufacturing, research and development, uh, off, uh, some office space, and then also distribution. And we see in tenant leases that have been signed recently, a lot of the activity was wholesale trade and distribution. Um, one of the challenges we have been hearing about consistently from brokers is uh, the city has a limited inventory of sort of scale up growth space for businesses over time. Uh, there aren't that many large buildings that can accommodate fast-growing businesses within the city. And this is my last slide. I, I hope I, uh, this has been interesting and that I've, I've kept you along for this journey. But uh, what we are doing right now, besides the data that I mentioned we are still analyzing, is we are also getting more into those uh, an analysis of sub-area contributions and conditions in the city. And I already find this information really fascinating. I mean, I think everyone in the room is aware that you look at what we're calling midtown, downtown, and then the central areas, that there's a lot of real estate inventory there, a lot of industrial space, a lot of office space. But it's really striking to see this very high share of the city's total inventory found in the central area uh, and that, then in the midtown, downtown area. Uh, in many cases, that, that central area actually has the majority of the space, depending on the use. And then the, the map on the right is just, I'll leave you with that, that's a map of uh, business locations within Ventura, which again sort of reinforces this, this message about where a lot of jobs are currently concentrated, but also found throughout the entire city as well, of course. Thank you, Derek. Um, let me talk a little bit about the, the, the economic development survey. This survey is going live today. Um, we, uh, you can see the, you're all going to want to get your camera out now to take a picture of the, of the uh, uh, it's just cityofventura.ca.gov backward slash ed. 
this is a survey that is meant to uh, ask community members and business owners and employees a variety of questions about what the what the uh, approach toward economic development should be. Questions like, should the city focus primarily on the retention and expansion of existing businesses? Should the city uh, focus on attracting new businesses? Uh, no matter which of those it is, sh what types of businesses, what business sectors should be targeted? Uh, on the workforce side, uh, Derek pointed out a little bit about that. Um, if we are going to focus on, if Ventura is going to focus on more workforce development, then what areas, what sector, economic sector should that focus on? Those are the kinds of questions contained in this survey. This survey goes live today. We hope that, so it's a much, it's, a, it's intended to be quite focused on the economic development issues. We're well aware that um, there have been many other surveys in the community, particularly as a result of the general plan process. And so we've attempted to focus this one as narrowly as possible. It it takes, what did we say, eight minutes to fill out? It takes eight minutes to fill out. It'll be open for a month. We are hoping for as many responses as we can possibly get. There'll be some demographic questions there too, so we get a sense of who is interested in what, and we can have cross tabs on that. Next steps, um, this, the, the economic development the economic context study, you heard about that, that's ongoing, we're not quite done with that. We don't quite have all the data yet. Uh, the survey, on May 31st, we will have an online public workshop where we will uh, talk more about what we are finding, trying to learn more about what people in the community want and are interested in, and we will have at least three different breakout groups uh, in, the, in that online discussion. And then later on, we will come back to this committee when we have a better sense of what this, uh, the proposed vibrant, <laughs> I keep I keep saying there's so many V's here, right? Uh, vibe, the, the proposed vibrant Ventura vision, did I get that right, Meredith? Vibrant Ventura vision. Once we have a sense of what that might look like, we will come back in person to the Economic Development Subcommittee and present it there. So you have plenty, and then eventually it goes to the City Council for adoption. So there'll be plenty of opportunities for you all to continue to engage with us as we move forward. So thanks very much, and I know there's probably some public comments, so I'll hand it back to the staff. Speakers. The first speaker is George Amadola. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. It's nice to see such a large turnout here for the Economic Development Strategy meeting. I've been attending these meetings with Economic Development for at least six years now. And by far, this is the largest turnout. It's really good to see. Uh, in some cases, this is a larger turnout than we see at many council meetings. <laughs> so uh, glad to see you all here. Um, we've got some things changing in this community. Um, you know, we have broadband coming in to some extent, improving access to the uh, internet, which should help stimulate the technology economy. But this town is somewhat reliant on technology and we're still kind of a bypass community. There's a lot of work taking place up at Vandenberg Air Force Base and the city of Ventura is not really enjoying any significant impact related to that. In addition, we're not really experiencing any significant impact as it relates to the work going on at the port of Huanimi. And so once again, as the 101 came through, we're being bypassed to some extent. I think that the economic development strategy is timely. I think the city is challenged with a lot of issues uh, and a looming financial crisis. Uh, the ongoing uh, budget is excessive compared to the revenue being generated by the city. The city is uh, underperforming with its pension obligations, and that's a, a disaster in the making. And then we have the effect of water pure, which will be a compounding rate increase, and um, then with the capital improvement projects. I'm trying to just figure out how all of this is sustainable. So I welcome the surveys, and I just hope that the surveys are more reliable than what we're seeing at GPAC. I don't think the data collection with GPAC is accurate, and I think a lot of decisions are being made based on inaccurate data. Thank you very much. And our final speaker is Eileen, I believe it's Reimers? Reimers, my apologies. 
Hi, my name is Eileen McHenry Reimers, and um, I actually was asked to come here by my uh, two daughters. They're in their mid-30s. They are single mothers of um, young children. I also have a stepson who has uh, two teenagers who all live in Ventura. Um, I'm just going to read the question that my um, daughter gave me to read. Um, to you. Um, her question was, what is the scope of the focus of this committee? Is it to lift up the working class and the middle class and make it so that they can stay in and afford to live in this community? Or are we focused on attracting outside investments and building up commercial industries and retail and tourism in the area? I'm wondering what the goal for economic development is. Is it both? And if it's to lift up the middle class and working class so that they can continue to live in Ventura and be, have it be affordable for the people already living here. How do, they, how do you plan on doing that? Do you plan on taking input from that demographic, which I see you are, um, uh, that is the middle class, working class of Ventura, or relying on people that are not in the develop, demographic to solve the problems? Um, the issues of the working class. And I, I noticed you mentioned housing availability, and that is, I think, should be given a lot of emphasis when we're talking about economic development. Because what's the point of having all this wonderful business if all it's doing is attracting uh, high income workers from outside the area to come in here and push out more and more of the middle class? So I hope that we can. Um, you know, content, I think the two have to work together. You cannot just have, you know, new economic development without thinking of where people are going to live who you want to work here. So thank you for your time. We do have another public speaker, Mike Dawson. Thank you very much for your time today. My wife and I, Kathy, were the owners of a small business here on the west side of uh, Ventura. Uh, we are also landowners on the west side of Ventura, and um, watching your presentation there about the economic development, we're talking about the west side, so I'm here to represent the west side. There's four businesses just like me on the west side. We're all crane rental services. We consider ourselves in a light industrial companies, and we service the Vandenbergs. We service the port. If you go to our yards right now, you will see over a hundred humongous Tesla type batteries for our green future. We are here to represent all the industries of our county. Just our crane rental industry is over $60 million of income. If you take the rest of the West Side Industrial um, Network that we all represent, we're well over $100 million worth of income, and we are all great paying jobs. They're trade jobs. We don't want to lose these jobs. So when we're talking about the economic development of the city of Ventura, we also want to recognize don't lose the critical economic people that have been here to develop what we have now. Almost all of our employees are middle class or above. They are great tradespeople. They make a good living. We're very diversified. We're proud to say that we have the first lady crane operator in the whole county working for us. She's 23 years old, and she's a Marine Corps vet. So what we want to do when we're talking about the economic development is we don't want to push out our light industrial businesses here that are generating well over three to 400 great paying jobs. Now I know at times people get a little bit about uh, frustrated about the oil industry, but I have interviewed both TNT, OST, Bragg, and myself, just the four crane companies that are operating in this county, and less than 15% of our income comes from the oil industry. It comes, all of our income comes from the other industries in our county, and we service this county, and we service Santa Barbara County. We're proud to say that we service Vandenberg Air Force Base, as you said, I'm very proud. Right? I have a very good contract with Bechtel up there. They look forward to us. And I wanted to say, take care of our city and don't forget the west side because we are there. We work in conjunction with the residents of the west side. We don't want to see them pushed out. Uh, I know that there's another meeting here tonight with GPAC and there's representatives from our crane industry and, and from the west side industry that's going to be there. I can't be there. 
but we have to work together. And I want to ask you guys to make sure that we're included in this process. Thank you very much. Chair Duran, that concludes our public speakers. So, um, comments from, comments or questions, yeah. I just, um, I just have a, a few comments. I, I want to uh, ensure the public that um, what a lot of our, or what our public speakers um, talked about or touched on today um, is that, you know, that's, that's certainly a, a priority of ours, or of this subcommittee, I, I believe, and that we want to make sure that our businesses who have been here for a very long time, generations at, at, at some point too, that, um, that they are included and that their needs are also being met as, a, as well as recruiting new businesses. And I think that is the whole purpose of all of this. So just wanna make sure that um, that is acknowledged and let the public know that we, we hear that loud and clear. Thank you. I, I also um, echo that, and I, you know, thank you for your comments. I, I grew up on the avenue, and I actually worked at a manufacturing plant on the avenue for uh, almost a decade. And yeah, and uh, my father uh, worked at a manufacturing plant for, I think, um, 50 years. And so, and that it's no longer there. And you know, there's there's been a few businesses that, quite a few businesses that have moved off the avenue. But um, grateful for what you're doing and who you're employing. And um, as Jeanette said, we are, we are absolutely, that's one of our goals to make sure that we keep the great things that we have and improve on what we need to improve on. Um, I did have a question in regards to the, uh, the timeline. We, it, I was looking, I don't know if it was slide three, four, whatever it was, talking about um, you're figuring out uh, what resources you're gonna need and then implementation so my my question is um, it looks like the I think it's the the next one maybe yes it's way in the front yeah um, that one right there so we have um, resource assessment midsummer 2023 and implementation and final presentation late summer 2023 um, and when we're talking implementation, we're talking we're ready to go? What we mean by that, well, a couple of things. One is we've already begun to look at resource assessment, and we'll, we're doing that, although it says midsummer, we're actually beginning to work on that. That will be part of the final economic development strategy. <clears throat> Once, when we, we and the staff together come before you, on a Monday night for approval, that will include an implementation plan with specific action steps that the city can then take to achieve the goals over the next five years. So it's not literally implementation in late summer, it's when, when we come to you or when the staff comes to you, uh, yes, the implementation steps will be in the strategy and ready to be uh, mo carried forward by the staff at that time. I ask because we do have a budget process and it looks like we would miss that if we followed this. Yes, I think that, Meredith, I, do you want to address that question? Yeah, so we have, a, we have a placeholder in this next fiscal year's budget for some implementation costs. It will absolutely not cover everything that potentially is um, provided in the resource assessment, what we need to be successful, but this lines us up. We really start creating our budget in November, December of the year for that July, so it sets us up to really start to gear up in the 2024 fiscal year of, of moving forward. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, just in regards to the, and, and you've probably covered this before um, in other meetings, but in regards to the surveys, I know it's available online, but are we sharing it with businesses, asking them to like share the link with others? How, how's that going? Yeah, so um, a lot of the businesses and um, business owners who are here today came because they got a postcard that invited them. We sent them to um, more than 6,000 business owners uh, throughout our community, and on there was a QR code. 
And it's, um, it says that the survey goes live today. You scan that QR code and you go to the website with the survey. And we are also going to be doing more of a kickoff. This is going to be part of the state of the city. We're going to be at the farmer's market. We're reaching out to the schools and we're going to do some social media. So we're really going to be spreading this. And also, um, Kerry creates a, a business newsletter, an economic development business newsletter every other week. And so this is going to be top line on that too, working to make sure that we get as most engagement as possible. Okay, thank you. So another question in regards to, I, I know you, you mentioned that uh, housing really isn't the focus, and I totally understand that, but I mean, it is such a, a vital part of the, the entire economic development program. So how are we looking at that, and how are we including that into the future? Well, the, we will have to acknowledge that housing is an issue, but, but the housing policy issues for the city are really, have been resolved, are being resolved through the housing element and the general plan. So we will simply follow those as much as we can. Uh, I think there are some, you know, there are obviously issues about the ability to attract workers who live elsewhere to come here. One of the issues that has come up, one of the interesting things has come up, that has come up is, is it possible to f create an economic development strategy that focuses on creating more jobs locally for the people who already live here you know, whatever their skill level. That's something we've talked a lot to the stakeholders about. That, that I think that the one comment was made that, you know, we're, Ventura is typically bypassed, right? Um, and I think that's a fair point. So if there are ways in the economic development strategy to encourage the creation of jobs that could take advantage of the local workforce, that would be, to the, that would, that would be an advantage from the economic development point of view rather than the housing point of view. Just in regards to the um, length of the economic development st strategic plan, it says five years, but at any given point, um, can we come back to it? Should something, you know, come out of, as we're going through the plan or we need to revise or re reconsider? I mean, th there's absolutely the ability through the economic development subcommittee to recommend to the city council to change um, and to pivot potentially. So really what we're hoping for is five major things to focus on through this strategy. And that's going to help just align us when we do think that maybe, oh, there's something else that's really cool. We go, oh, this is what we're focusing on. This is our goal. And so we really want to be able to have those success over the long term on those. But of course, if there's another pandemic, if there's something else that really throws a wrench into what we have planned here, then it's absolutely something to reassess. Great, thanks. I, I also wanted to make another comment, not, not necessarily a question, but for those of, for those of you that are in the audience, uh, it really, uh, you know, the reason that Meredith and Carrie are in the positions that they're in is because we want to make sure that the businesses that we have are taken care of. I mean, this, this is a big deal for us. We, we want to make sure that new businesses coming in are treated great and we have great customer service, but we don't want to forget those that have been here for a lot of years. And this is why we have these positions to make sure that we're able to, to help and support those that are, that are existing because we're not, we're, we're not going to do well if we continue just to rotate businesses in and out. We, we need to make sure we have longevity. And so I, I just want to say thank you to you two because I know that that is your focus and you want to make sure that that's, that's the direction we're headed. So any other comments? Um, any others from staff? So items for future agendas, is that what we're... So we're looking at... Uh, prior fee schedule discussion next time around, as well as the update on tax uh, data comparison. Mm -hmm. So um, do we open up to any more public comments at this time or are we finished with that? Staff, communication. staff communications. All right. June 16th is the date of the survey, I'm sorry. We, we did change the date of the, the public meeting to the end of May 31st. We want to make sure those who come to that have the opportunity to respond to the survey. So June 16th, it's a Friday, is, uh, is the date. I, I wanted to say thank you, Bill, Derek, for uh, your presentation. Thank you so much. 
All right, so we just have two quick items for staff communications. A quick update on Main Street Moves. So Main Street Moves are design consultant, RRM design consultants. They are starting their stakeholder interviews with businesses throughout Main Street and California Street on um, what to include in the design guidelines. We also launched a survey to go to all business owners and all property owners within the Main Street Moves scope to kind of get um, a temperature on how they uh, like the program, if things are still going well, or if they have any input on potential scope changes or what the future could look like. We plan on doing this right now and then doing it again after the design guidelines are created. So once they see the formal process of what this actually looks like for the long-term program, if they still are poised to continue participation. So we will be reporting back with that and RRM will be coming to you and reporting on their design guidelines before they go to council for approval. And that will be in the next uh, month or two. Right, and just real quickly, I just wanted to remind um, our subcommittee and pr uh, those in the audience that on Monday night, we're gonna be actually recognizing three businesses um, for a Business of the Month program. It's a joint effort with the city and the chamber. And we'll be recognizing three businesses here in the community on Monday night. Um, and then I just wanted to remind folks, if you are a business owner or you have a favorite business in Ventura, we have a business uh, recognition program. It's on our website, the cityofventura.ca.gov backslash ed. You'll find all the information there. The nomination process is very easy. Um, and it's our way of acknowledging our business community, thanking our business community, um, and um, hopefully spurring other folks to um, engage and nominate other businesses as well so again Monday night we'll be recognizing three businesses through that program and then our environmental sustainability program will also be recognizing three of our green business programs so six total um, coming Wednesday thank you any other communications I, I want one more thing um, I, I wanted to, to let you know like we, we've had businesses that have been here for a long time that do incredible work. And if anybody gets stuck or anybody gets uh, in a position where like, uh, I, I need some help or uh, wh what do they need to do? Who do they call? Meredith and Carrie. Um, so just reach out to us. We're based in the city manager's office. You just Google, you know, you can Google City of Ventura Economic Development. You can get our phone numbers, our emails, and you can access us here. And um, we're here to help facilitate and be ombudsman for our business community. So we're definitely here to help everyone through any process, any question. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope everybody understands that. Yes. It comes back to this committee, and then uh, we go from here, yeah, before it goes to city council. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you to um, just like the, I know we have representatives here from the auto dealership who, that rep, that generates four, four and a half to five million dollars a year for the city of Ventura, which is absolutely incredible for us. And um, you know, the Ventura Chamber of Commerce who, how many business, 7,700 businesses that are represented, um, and, and uh, you know, Jim Rice brought Piranos back and is doing incredibly well there. I mean, it's, I, I just gotta say, you know, to all of you that have businesses and, you know, Kevin with Downtown Ventura Partners, I, it is awesome what you're, everyone is doing, working together to make this city an incredible city. So I just wanted to acknowledge and recognize you and say thank you for all the hard work that you're all doing. And um, any others, any other things? Okay, then uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.